This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly make a realistic miniature bombed out factory using inexpensive materials. Let's get to it. So I start with some foam core board that I'm going to measure a 12 inch by 9 inch rectangle on. I'll further divide this into three segments. This is one of my wall sections and I'm going to make what is called a sawtoothed roof line. A sawtooth is an iconic pattern for a factory and in fact, if you look up a factory symbol, almost all the icons use the sawtooth roof as a visual shorthand for a factory. The way it works is you point the windows away from the equator, which allows a lot of natural light to come in, but not direct sunlight, which might overheat the machinery inside. Anyways, my walls are going to be three four inch sections wide with a two inch high sawtooth. I cut some three inch by two inch windows on the sides as well, five inches up the sides of the walls. I make two of these wall pieces and when I'm done, they should look something like this. But for the front of the factory, I make an eight and a half inch by nine inch rectangle of foam core. I make a wide door and space for a huge window above. This is gonna be the main bay door for the factory that'll allow models to pass through and enter the structure. For the back, I make a rectangle that's seven inches tall, mark out a window, and then draw and cut a diagonal line across it to represent the ruined edge of the building. One wall is already ruined, but I'm gonna to need to ruin this other wall partially as well. I start by cutting another doorway and then cut through again on a diagonal line. Don't worry about being too precise because this is a ruin after all. Next, I'm gonna need a base. So I take a piece of medium chipboard and cut it into a 12 inch by nine inch rectangle. With some hot glue, I assemble my wall sections to make the basic shape. So for the interior, I added a mezzanine walkway around the inside, one inch below the windows. This will allow me to place models up there, shooting out of the windows and such. For more interior detail, I made some steel I-beams using medium chipboard. This is a fundamental scratch building technique that I really love. You cut long strips of chipboard, in this case I'm doing quarter inch, and then glue the pieces together using white glue or Aline's tacky glue, which is what I'm using here. Now, I lost some footage here, so just close your eyes for a moment and picture me gluing some of these beams onto the structure. Nicely done. Let's keep going. So it's time to hide some of the unsightly edges and add some sweet texture. I'm gonna clad the whole outside of this building with corrugated paper. Now this stuff comes in a cheap pack from Amazon. It comes in lots of colors, but I decided to use the black sheets because they're uh, the most badass uh, until I ran out of black sheets and had to use blue. Back inside, I made a nice staircase going from one level to another. I wanted it to be fairly compact with a landing halfway up that you can place a model on. I decided to make the landings from foam core supported by more chipboard beams. For the stairs, I used O-scale styrene stairs from Plastruct, which are a perennial favorite of mine and a bit of an extravagance, but I think they're worth it. I really like these things. Now another visual element that makes a factory look like a factory are the windows. I'm sure there's a term for factory windows. Give me a second. Ah, muntins. So factory windows use a lot of small panes of glass divided by muntins. This saves money because small panes are less expensive and it makes repairs easier as you just have to repair one pane at a time if some rotten kid throws a rock through the window on the weekend or something like that. Anyways, I originally planned to cut out the windows by hand using medium chipboard, which is a thick paper card that you might recognize from the back of a legal pad. Now this was really time consuming and it left my hand cramping and miserable and I did make a few windows this way, so it is possible to do this way, but it also inspired me to make a pretty big hobby breakthrough. I'm gonna make my own 3D files and print them on my 3D printer. But before we get into that, let's take a quick moment to look at today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you wanna get any of the materials that I used in today's project for yourself, check out the link to my website below that I made using Squarespace. Using Squarespace's tools, I've been working on a website that'll be a hub for showcasing my work, linking to products I use, and selling my channel merch such as the new t-shirt designs that I've just launched. So far the experience has been great. There are a bunch of stylish templates that are optimized for whatever device your audience is using, and it's really intuitive to customize it and add the features that you want. So head to squarespace.com slash ericshobbyworkshop to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code ericshobbyworkshop. Thanks Squarespace. Now let's get back to those windows. 
To make some nice muntined windows, I'm going to first make the design on Adobe Illustrator. I make a rectangle the size of the window I need, and then divide the rectangle into the right amount of rows and columns. I adjust the thickness of the muntins, add a thicker frame, then expand the selection and merge the shapes together. I save this as a vector graphics file, or SVG. Next, I open the SVG in Blender, a 3D modeling software. The first thing I do is convert the curve into a mesh, go into edit mode, then extrude the shape upwards to a thickness of 2mm, which is the same thickness as the chipboard I was using. I can then save the file as an STL file. Next, I open the STL in my slicer software. In this case, I'm using Cura, and I make sure that it's scaled to the right size. I then save it to an SD card, take it to my printer, and let her rip. Now this may have sounded complicated, but it was actually surprisingly simple. If you guys have any questions about this, you can chat with me on my Discord for Patreon supporters, and I'd be happy to walk you through whatever information I can. I'll also make the SCL files available on this project to my Patreon supporters if you want to make your own. As you can see, once the pieces are printed, they're pretty sweet. Nice and durable too. Now it's time to sell the collapsed feel of this corner, and that means adding a bunch of crumpled metal. Literally though. I'm going to use some crumpled up tin foil to fill out the shape of the rubble pile. This is a technique I got from the channel RFD Hobby, and it's a super useful little trick. It's important to me that a Lehman Rust tank can drive right through this building, so I kept checking to make sure I have the clearance for that. And once I'm satisfied with the shape, I add a few pieces of chipboard I-beam, then cover the pile in scraps of corrugated paper that I had left over from cladding the building before. Nice. Next I'm going to cover the whole piece in a mixture of black paint and Mod Podge. This is really important for sealing all the pieces of chipboard and corrugated paper. They'll be a little bit fragile and any moisture will ruin them otherwise. Now I'm going to use a spray primer later, so the paint is mostly just to help me keep track of where I've applied the Mod Podge at this stage. My roof pieces get a little bit of that mix too. It'll really help stiffen the areas where the corrugated paper overhangs the chipboard. When that's dry, I use the same black paint and Mod Podge mixture to put down some fine grout. The reason I'm doing grout after the sealing step is that my brush would pick up the grit and spread it everywhere if I did it before, which is not something I want on this piece. Now, as you can see, the grout kind of gets everywhere anyways, but with a dry brush, I dusted off some of the areas like the corrugated rubble pile in the corner, and then give everything a nice soaking of Geek Gaming Matte Scenic Sealant. I have no paid affiliation with Geek Gaming, but I can vouch that this is a good product. Time to paint. I take the piece out into the garage and I blast it with some black primer. That's like a tongue twister, blast it with some black primer. At this stage, I primer all the windows as well. Now without even waiting for that to dry, I come in like an absolute renegade with some silver spray paint. Hitting all the corrugated metal parts, I deliberately got a pretty uneven coverage of this paint. This will help the run down ruined feeling that I'm going for later. I use some burnt umber spray paint to pick out the beams inside. Remember guys, if you're scared of using an airbrush, you can always just spend a fortune on aerosol spray paints. I made sure to zoom in alarmingly close for these shots to simulate a rough and ready motion sickness type feel. This is to give the effect that I'm still a growing channel on the come up and still need your support on Patreon. Thanks guys. <laughs> I take it back inside and paint the floors in mezzanine walkway with a light gray that will simulate poured concrete. I deliberately watered it down to get poor coverage. As long as I don't leave any directional brush strokes, this will look cool when it's dry. Time to put those windows in. Bing, bing, bing. Nice. I decided to make a little sign to put on this side. I use the same techniques as making the windows for this. Illustrator, extrude, print. Mercium is Latin for warehouse or something. I only chose this word because I didn't like the Latin word for factory when I looked it up. It didn't print perfectly on my filament printer, but you know, I think it's fine. A resin printer would have been better, no doubt. Anyways, I painted Caliban green, dry brush with a lighter green, and then pick out the letters and numerals in Wraithbone. When it's done, I attach it with a few dots of hot glue. I use dots when I'm feeling indecisive and think I might have to rip something off later. I think it looks pretty handsome there, but let's blast it with Nuln Oil just to dirty it up a little bit and add some contrast. Nice. At this stage, the windows that I inexplicably glued on way before the others get painted black, and I do some touch-ups with burnt umber as well on some of my steel beams. This spray and correct method is way quicker than painting things by hand if you can get away with it. Now using my dirty paint water and some black paint, I make a thin black wash that I apply pretty much everywhere. This grimes things up a little, but it also dulls down the shine of the silver a bit, 
which is currently way too bright. Inside, I apply it in a deliberately blotchy manner to add to the dilapidated kind of burned out appearance inside. I give the windows a quick dry brush with some gray as well, just to make the details pop a bit. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm gonna add some rust and weathering effects with oil paint. I put them on a bit of folded paper towel because as you can see, some of them are rather unctuous. Did I use that right? Anyways, they're oily because they're oil paints. And too much oil will mean they never dry on the model, which is not ideal, so hence the paper towel to soak up some of that oil. I'm gonna load the brush with the amount of paint that you would go for for like dry brushing. But with oil paints, it's a much different feel and the pigment just goes and goes and goes. So with my brush loaded like this, I sort of start scrubbing this rust color around the seams and edges of the corrugated metal. By using a few different paints, I get some nice variation in the rust tones, which looks more natural. The roof gets it too, of course. As a final touch, I spray the whole piece with several coats of matte varnish. This will help seal in those oil paints and further dull the silver somewhat. And there you have it, a simple bombed out factory that looks awesome on the tabletop. You can combine this tutorial with some of the other videos on this channel to make a whole industrial complex with smokestacks, pipelines, and other stuff. Now, I really like the style of this building and it was fun and quick to make, so I might make more like this in the future. Let me know if that's something that would interest you. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.